It's late at night and you're having some trouble sleeping. So you do what you always do. You open up your phone, pop open the YouTube app, and you start browsing for some content. Now you're already a little bit of a photographer. You love taking pictures with your iPhone and that DSLR your mom bought you on a Black Friday special and gave it to you for Christmas. But as you're scrolling those scrumptious thumbnails, eventually something catches your eye. You see a really old film camera and a catchy video title, and you can't resist it. You click the video. You watch the video and it doesn't take long for those nostalgic hooks to sink into you. And just a few minutes later, you're well on your way to eBay, frantically searching for film cameras. You buy a clean looking, reasonably priced knock on FM2, head to B&H Photo and buy yourself a box of Portra 400 because that's what the internet says is best, and you're on your way. The above story is pretty similar to how I imagine most folks these days find their way into film photography. But as those of us who've been in the hobby for any length of time know, that's really only half the battle. Once your film and camera arrive at your house and you get everything set up just so and you think you know how to use it, then you gotta take your gear outside and actually use it. And after you go take what you think are gonna be wonderful images, you send them off to the lab and you hope and pray that they come out okay. And I think once we get those first negatives back from the lab, I think that's when the real challenge of film photography becomes clear. At least for my part, when those first negatives came back, there was a lot of disappointment. Oh. I imagine many folks are the same. Film photography is really difficult. Before you make the bold decision to get into film photography at any level, you should know this one thing. Film photography is not gonna make your images better. That is, it won't unless you do one thing. It's tempting to hop on Instagram and look at all these wonderful film images, searching 35 millimeter hashtag, portrait hashtag, all, whatever, cine still, and see all these fantastic images created by wonderful film photographers out there and think, hey, I'm gonna plop this roll of portrait 400 in my camera and wonderful images are gonna be made, right? It's that simple. But I've got some bad news. It's not that easy and you're likely to be disappointed, especially for your first few rolls. I don't think I was the first and I'm probably not gonna be the last person who is absolutely blindsided by the difficulties of shooting film. Imagine my surprise Surprise when it was nowhere near as glamorous as it looked on YouTube. And there's gonna be lots of old heads in the comments saying, well, it's not the camera that makes it difficult. Film photography is just the same as, as, as digital photography. It's just, that's, that's just not true. That's BS. Most film cameras are gonna provide a degree of difficulty and complexity beyond that which we're used to with digital photography. The one film photography tip that I have for you that you must know is that if you're gonna get into film photography, you need to be willing to learn. Film photography is unforgiving, and if you're gonna try to have any sort of success shooting film, then you're gonna need to be willing to learn. And what do I mean by that? What do I mean you need to be willing to learn? There are some very clear differences between digital cameras and film cameras. You're gonna be much more in control of what's happening with your camera with film, and you're gonna wanna learn the lessons that the camera is teaching you as you make mistakes. First and foremost with film, you're gonna have a limited amount of exposures. We're all used to going out with digital cameras with 64, 128 gigabyte memory memory cards and never even thinking about how many images we're taking on a particular shoot. Well, you're gonna be in the world of film where at best you're probably gonna have 36 exposures on a roll. This requires careful consideration of each shot that you're taking and that you're not just out there spamming shots mindlessly. Each shot is gonna cost you money. That brings me to my next point. Film photography is rather expensive, particularly over the past few years. The prices of film cameras, the prices of film, the prices of development, all that stuff has increased. So film photography is actually quite expensive. And if you're actually doing the math for each shot that you're taking, lots of times it can work out to a dollar or more per shot. So you're gonna wanna be careful with the images that you're taking. Another way that film is much more challenging than digital is there's no immediate feedback. Right? How many times have we been out with a digital camera and something was wrong with our camera? Exposure dial had been turned accidentally. You had the camera in the wrong mode. Some setting somewhere was messed up and it was causing problems with your images. And lucky for you, you were able to see that problem on the back and able to correct it in real time. Film photography, it's just not like that. If you've made a mistake with your settings or some sort of problem with the exposure, you're not gonna know that until you get those negatives back. Another really significant challenge is the limited ISO range. With a digital camera, you can take shots at ISO 50 or 2 million seconds apart. It's that easy. Film cameras just aren't like that. You're gonna have to consciously make the decision about what film speed you wanna use in advance of taking your camera out and shooting it. So let's say that you make the decision to shoot Ultra 800. Well, you're locked into that 800 speed film for the duration of that roll. And if you find yourself in really bright, sunny conditions, that can be prohibitive. The same can be said for films like Velvia 50, right? If you've got Velvia 50 in your camera, it's a slide film, it's very colorful, but it requires a lot of light. So that can be prohibitive as well. Don't need to find yourself in a situation where there's gonna be a lot of contrast or really low light because that film's gonna be problematic. 
So a lot of those decisions, the colors and the ISO range, those decisions have been made on the front end. You're gonna wanna make that decision in advance and make sure that you have the right film stock in your camera. Or you're gonna end up wasting shots or leaving your camera sitting with a half used roll of film in it for months and months and months which sometimes happens to me. <laughs> Another difference between the two is post-processing. We're talking about all these decisions that have to be made on the front end, the film stock, the ISO, all the different things. Many of those are gonna have a decided impact on the way that your final image looks. For example, slide film, Velvia, very colorful. Kodak Ektar, color negative film, very colorful. Portra, much better for portraits, but you have some weird stuff as well. Let's say you shoot your images on black and white. There's, there's no turning those images into color. If you've shot on black and white, the images will be black and white. Same goes for tungsten balance films. If you're shooting on Portra 800, you're gonna have really cool images. Yeah, you can change that in post, but the results aren't always that great. If you're used to digital cameras with the raw files and the really wide exposure latitudes and the ability to just do whatever you want with them in, in Photoshop, I mean, the images are played, you can do anything with them. Um, film photography could be kind of a rude awakening. But the most important distinction between film and digital and the main point of this video is that learning curve. Film photography is just harder, especially if you're interested in shooting a lot of older cameras like my large format camera up there or the Roloflex. These cameras many times don't even have batteries. They have no automatic, they don't have any automatic anything inside them. You're gonna have to make every decision on your own. You're gonna have to pick the shutter speed, the aperture, the focus. Every single decision will be made by you. But that is the beauty of film photography. It's what makes my film images so special. When I get a roll of 36 exposures back, I know that when I look at a lot of my images, every decision that was made is a decision that I made consciously. Whereas digital camera, you've got a little box and a computer and all these decisions are being made inside the camera. With film photography, you are making these decisions. The film camera puts you in control of everything. And that's the appeal of film photography to lots of folks. But you have to be willing to listen to your camera because with the ability to change all those settings, it's ability to make a lot of mistakes. And if you're like me, you're going to make mistakes. You're gonna have times where you just mess it up. You make a hash of it. And you gotta be willing to learn. The biggest advantage of film photography is that if you use film for a while and you really stick with it, it will teach you and it'll make you a better photographer. There's no way around it. So back to the video title, back to the main point of this video, film won't make your images better unless you stick with it and you're willing to learn. So I guess I would say, don't come into film photography a lot. Come into it with an interest and a willingness to learn. Bring your patience, bring your creativity, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. And you also better bring your wallet too, because these days shooting film is expensive. But the most important thing, and this is a cliche, but try to have fun. And if watching this video, you're still interested in going on eBay and buying that wonderful film camera, let me point you in the direction of a really good one, and that's the Nikon F100. Check out this video talking about all the advantages of the Nikon F100 and how it represents an incredible value in the world of film photography, even today. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you could, before you go, click the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching.